It's Badminton World, the show that brings you all things badminton from the four corners of the globe. Apart from bringing you the latest world rankings and results from the Adidas China Masters, our feature this month centers on dynasties and badminton. Plus, we speak to a player who harbors the hope of emulating his father. Welcome to another episode of Badminton World. game of badminton that it appeals to all strata of society and across all ages. It's not unusual for badminton to involve the whole family, a family affair that can metamorphosize into a family dynasty. Through the pages of history, badminton dynasties are a plenty. Indonesia boasts the Manaiki brothers who have a world champion in their midst. The city siblings are continued to be held in high esteem in Malaysia and abroad. Either by luck or by design, Malaysia seems to be producing badminton families more than any other badminton mad nations. The Latif siblings, Zachary, Arif and Razif, have made their mark in the Malaysian scene. They are the latest in the long line of badminton families who have set the local sporting fraternity alight. The way Eddie and David Chong in the 50s, Tan Ait Huang and Tan Ait Mong in the 60s, the Siddiqs in the 80s and 90s, the Saha brothers, the Yat twins, and the Hashim family of Rosalind, Hafiz and Muhammad. Let's get to know the Latif brothers who strengthen their family bond through badminton. There's one good thing about my family. My family is unique because all of us share the same interests. So in a sense, we are united. If one of us wants to play badminton, then the rest will follow suit. Each and every one of us have the basic fundamentals in badminton, which strengthens our shared interests. Plus, our social life revolves around sports. Our family is unique as there are not many siblings active in the badminton world. So from there, people can see that there is a family of badminton players playing for Malaysia. And people can see for themselves how, as siblings, we thrive on each other's support and encouragement. From family bonding to global stardom, that is their ultimate ambition. As a family, our hopes are that we can go far in badminton. If possible, be on par with the Siddiq family, God willing. When you are involved in an elite surrounding, having your family members nearby is an added advantage. During a match, if we know that our siblings are watching us play, automatically our spirits will rise because they are cheering for you. Even if my game is at 9am, they are willing to wake up early to cheer me on. So why can't I do the same for them? Sometimes when we are at a loss during a match, but suddenly hear the voices cheering us on, it will renew my determination. Sometimes when I get tired and my game slows down, I will hear my father shouting at me to keep on going. The voices of the people that we love are an automatic boost. But how did it all begin? My sister started playing first, followed by brother Najib. After that, Zakri, then me. Seven of the nine Latif siblings have played at state level at least a remarkable feat. All of us became serious when we were in primary two. We started training seriously. Then we qualified to play for the state. After that, it was full-time training. So from then on, we became serious. Naturally, they owe it to their parents. My father was always interested in badminton and encouraged us from the start. Our training would begin after Maghrib from 8 till 10.30 at night. My father was extremely busy at that time. After work, he would play badminton with his friends, then rush home to spend time with his children, then send us off for training wait for us for two hours, take us home, and it will still go to work the next day. My father sacrificed for us, and no matter how tired he was, he never missed sending us for training. That's how much he supported us. Teachers used to ask their students what they want to be when they grow up. The standard answers will either be a doctor or a pilot. And back in the day, 
badminton was just a hobby. At first, I started playing because my father asked me to. Since I liked the game, I entered a few tournaments. From there, my skills evolved and my father started sending me for full-time training until I was 13 years old. That was when I decided to turn badminton into a career. When the tough gets going, their father Latif remains a symbol of faith and perseverance. My father is like my idol. He is always very encouraging. And I believe he gave us that gift. For example, my little brother was a little down in his game. We guided and supported him until he was back in his game. And there was once, when I was 15 years old, I told my father I wanted to quit. He told me to be patient and not to give up. He believed in me. The 2014 season promises to be a challenging one for the siblings. My two targets for 2014 are to play at the Asian Games and to improve my rankings. Right now, I am in the top four for Malaysia, but I would like to be in the top three. So we shall see if I'll be given a chance to go. But they remain focused by keeping each other on their toes. There were many a time that my brother had cautioned me on my training schedule and my technique. Because ever since I left the BAM, I've had to rely on myself. I have to improve my self-discipline. Motivating each other has become a daily routine for the siblings. We have always discussed amongst ourselves. For example, before a game, we will discuss gameplay. If you're playing against a certain player, his strong points will be researched. So from there, we will plot our strategy. As my brothers have more experience than me, their words give me strength and confidence to face my opponents. With the new year just around the corner, Zachary is still fired up, although he realises time is running out. I will keep on playing for another two or three years until the 2016 Olympics. Who knows, I may get a chance to enter the Olympics. In 2008, I almost had a chance. I was automatically qualified, but each country has a quota of only two pairs, Hu Keng Kiat and Tan Bun Hyong, and Chon Tang Fu and Lee Man Wah. So I missed that opportunity. Zachary has aimed for the sky for 2014. My target for 2014 is to qualify for World Championships. That's my main target. And if there's a chance, I would like to get a place in the Thomas Cup team, God willing. Finally, we ask them their hopes for the future. I haven't won a lot of titles, so my hope is that my brothers will be able to better my achievements. I always challenge them to break my record. My hopes are that all of us will achieve our targets in badminton plus whatever that we aim for in our personal lives. Actually, I hope that one of us will make it to the top. Last time we nearly saw the light with Arif and with Zakri in 2008. While he was under the guidance of coach Rexi, he became a champion. Ideally, all three of us will qualify for the Olympics. To the new badminton dynasty, we wish you the best of luck. Badminton. No sport comes close. Stay tuned as we discuss a new legacy created by an Irish family only on Badminton World. Hi, Sally Chongwei, watching Badminton World. Welcome back to Badminton World. Slice, drop shot, flat high clear, smash, intricate net play. All part and parcel of the daily grind that a badminton player has to undergo in order to fulfill his or her dream. Malaysia 2 remains loyal to the script. The Malaysian formula in providing training for all levels of badminton is the one that involves governmental and non-governmental organisations. This smart partnership, which involves the BA of Malaysia with government agencies such as the National Sports Council and the National Sports Institute, two agencies under the purview of the Youth and Sports Ministry, has helped to preserve badminton status as a national passion. If BAM provides the technical expertise, NSC is the financing body. NSI provides a sports scientist and support group. 
BAM has a large pool of coaches to help shape the future of badminton in the country. In the elite group, Rashid Sidik, Tae Su Bok and Hendra Wan are in charge of men's singles. While Tan Kim He, Paulus Firman and Rosman Raza monitor the doubles, and Wong Tak Meng putting the women's singles players through their paces. The coaching structure in BAM ensures it is designed to meet the needs of the individual rather than the large group concept. A dedicated group of coaches responsible on all aspects of training, such as technique or match play, will ensure a bright future. BAM's development plan is on the right track, with a healthy pool of players at the Bukit Jalil Sports School and excellent infrastructure. This bodes well for the future of Malaysia Badminton. The rugged terrain of Donegal County in Ireland houses Beltony Hill, where one of the finest stone circles reputedly older than Stonehenge is found. But we shall not touch on history. Just over a mile from that hill is Raffo, a small town that has produced a badminton mad family, the McGees. When Samuel and Audrey McGee introduced the game to their offspring over a decade ago, little did they know that they would be shaping the future of the game in Ireland. From a building with one small court in Raffo emerged Daniel, Sam, Chloe and Joshua. After flirting with fame for a fleeting moment, Daniel, 27, became a coach in 2009. It was just a year after Sister Chloe had become the only second Irish female badminton player to play at an Olympic game. With Beijing 2008 and London 2012 Olympics under her belt, Chloe enjoys a growing reputation in the women's singles. In the mixed doubles, Chloe joins forces with younger brother Sam. Much of their progress is attributed to Danish coaching. I think uh, in Ireland we've been based on like uh, European Danish style coaching, and I think it's more. Uh, I think in Asia they do a lot longer, harder training, and I think in, in Ireland we do shorter, uh, more. Quick intervals, maybe like two minutes, where in Asia they might do ten minutes. I think it's a little bit different. I think it's more European, the Irish style. Yeah, I think like we do mostly everything. We kind of a lot of our training would be based maybe on the Danish way. We've had Danish coaches in the past, and uh, yeah, I think uh, in Ireland we don't have as many good technique coaches, so uh, we do need to, a lot of work on that. There's no doubt about that. But um, yeah, we focus on mostly all the areas. Chloe, who laments the lack of players in Ireland to help her stretch her boundaries, intends to give back to the game one day. Um, I don't know if I'll go into coaching. I think uh, maybe when I finish badminton, I'd like to get away from badminton. But I'd like to think that I would also give back and I would help the younger players that I go back and maybe spar with them. And Because for me at the minute in Ireland, the big problem is I don't have so, so many girls to play against. And when it comes to tournaments like this, then I can be a little bit behind when it comes to sparring. But then uh, that's what I'd like to do when I retire is maybe help the younger ones go and play with them. But uh, as for coaching, uh, I don't think I would like to be a coach. <laughs> Compared to their Asian opponents, Ireland is lagging behind in the coaching aspect. I think the coaching method in Ireland is um, its quite, uh, the standard's quite low in Ireland uh, for coaching at the minute. Like a lot of the coaches are still learning. Um, our main coach, yeah, he's gone out, he's kind of coaching us and we've had Danish coaches in the past come in and Swedish coaches and I think, you know, once they start educating them, uh, then they'll get better. But at the minute, uh, our main coach is good, but under that it's, it's quite low level. Things are looking up though. With Dan as the chief coach, Sam has won a European junior gold medal at the men's doubles, as well as Norwegian, Lithuanian and Turkish international titles and taken a growing list of Irish titles. Chloe, with whom he reached the final of the Dutch Open mixed doubles in April, is a seven-time Irish champion and Ireland's badminton poster girl. Nonetheless, Sam knows much needs to be done to close the gap with the superpowers. Strength is the uppermost in his mind. I think the Asians are definitely more powerful. Um, I think maybe their their bodies are a little bit better built. I think they're quite uh, muscly and quick quick muscles in their body, where Europe's are quite a little bit slower. I don't know why that is, but um, I don't think we do any less power training, but I just think we're not as powerful as the Asians. Badminton. No sport comes close. Coming up on Badminton World, results of the Adidas China Masters, plus an exclusive interview with the legendary player and his prodigal son. My name is Ville Long, I'm from Finland, and you are watching Badminton World. Welcome back to Badminton World. China's badminton stars celebrated victory on home soil 
claiming all but one of the five titles up for grabs on the final day of the China Masters Tournament at Changzhou. Seventh seed Wang Zhengming took the men's singles title after a marathon one hour and 15 minute game against South Korea's Son Wan Ho, which he eventually won 11 21, 21 14, 24 22. In the women's final, Thailand's Pontek Burana Prasurtsuk failed to clinch a fairy tale title after she was overcome by China's Liu Xin, 21 4, 13 21, 21 12. Top seeds Ko Sung Hyun and Lee Yong Dae of South Korea beat second seeds Hiroyuki Endo and Kenichi Hayakawa of Japan in the men's doubles the only final to witness a non-Chinese winner. In the mixed doubles final, second seed Zhang Nan and Zhao Yunlei of China claimed a 21-18-21-12 victory against South Korea's Yu Yong Seon and Yom Hai Won. The South Koreans were runners-up for the second year in succession. In the women's doubles, top seeds Wang Zhao Li and Yu Yang beat second seeds Ma Jin and Tang Jin Hua 21-17-21-16 in an all-China final. Now let's take a peek at the world rankings so far. Lee Chong Wei remains firmly in the driving seat on the top of the men's singles as the top five remains unchanged. However, Jano Jorgensen of Denmark climbed three spots to take number six. Though still in the top ten, Tommy Sugiartu dropped one spot to number seven. China Masters winner Wang Zhengming climbed one spot to take number nine. Although her China Masters adventure was halted at the semi-final stage, Li Juri remains the top-ranked women's shuttler. She is closely pursued by world champion Rachanong Intanon. Ko Su Hyung and Lee Yong Dae are firmly on top of the men's doubles section, which sees no change in the top five pair. The same story goes for the women's doubles, where the top five pairs remain the same, with Wang Zhao Li and Yu Yang remaining at the top. However, plenty of changes in the mixed doubles. Olympic champions Zhang Nan and Zhao Yunlei are back as the world number one after winning the China Masters, swapping places with Zhu Chen and Ma Jin, followed by three-time world champions Tontowi Ahmad and Liliana Natsir at number three. The pick of the events in October are the Super Series Premier Yonex Denmark Open on 15th till the 20th, the Yonex French Open on 22nd till the 27th, as well as the BWF World Junior Championships in Bangkok from 23rd October to 3rd November, where we hope there will be more gems to be uncovered. For more info, you can visit BWF's official website. Welcome back to Badminton World, as we speak exclusively to a father and son combo. Icho Sugiarto was an accomplished shuttler, winning the World Championship in Copenhagen 30 years ago, after an epic battle against his compatriot Lim Sui King. Months after climbing the podium, Ichok married Nina Yaro and they were blessed with three kids, one of which is carrying forward his legacy. Born five years after Ichok lifted the world title, Tommy showed a glimpse of his potential of becoming a chip off the old block by winning the World Junior Silver Medal in 2006. If Ichok was known for his supreme fitness, impregnable defence, excellent backhand and brute strength, Tommy has more of a rounded game. The difference in styles has a lot to do with the new point system. But comparison between the two is unavoidable, of which Tommy is quick to shrug off. Pressure will always be there. That's normal. Especially when you are representing your country. Every player will face a huge burden. My motivation is to do my best for Indonesia and to be a champion for my country and of course for myself. Parental support has been crucial behind Tommy's emergence. Yes, my father gives me plenty of support. He motivates me to be a fighter, so that when I play, I can face anyone in whatever condition. Even if I'm under tremendous pressure or I am too tired, I must soldier on and keep on fighting. Ichot's pointers are allied with divine assistance. In order to maintain his focus, Tommy observes certain routines before setting foot onto the court. Yes, I do observe a few routines. Before a match, I will call my parents and ask for their blessings. I will also pray and ask for strength before entering the court. Divine assistance aside, Tommy was taught by Icho to have tons of self-belief. He told me to be confident and to believe in myself. He said I must show to everyone that I am confident of my capabilities. And whoever is my opponent, no matter how hard it is or how great the pressure is, all can be faced down if I'm confident with myself. 
Having listened to Tommy's side of the story, now we speak to the proud father. I am so proud and happy to see Tommy giving his best for Indonesia and for himself. I always say to him, if you want to be the best, you must beat the best players. And if he wants to be a champion, he must defeat a champion. But as Icho insisted, Tommy is thousands of miles away from reaching the promised land. Right now, Tommy is on a roll, but his journey is still very long. But hopefully, with each step, he will be more confident. He must believe that he can and will make it. That's the only way to reach the top, and that's what I always tell him. Tommy is fortunate not only to have inherited the DNA of the world champion, but like other children of former athletes, he was given an early start. To be a champion, he must go through pain. He must go through hardships. He needs discipline. He must want to defeat everyone while he's still in his teens. And he has proven he has all the above. And I will continue to support him. I shared with him everything that I had gone through when I was a player. For me, supporting him mentally is more important in order for him to be a great player. Icho is generous in sharing his years in badminton to jumpstart Tommy's career. We always talk about the years when I was an athlete. I was so confident during that time that my preparation was designed in such a way that I will not allow myself to be defeated by anyone. I told him how determined I was in beating players who were better than me and the preparation that I had to go through in order to achieve that. Nowadays, I barely see Tommy. Every month, he's always off to many tournaments. So it's hard to meet up with him. So he must be prepared and work harder than ever. I always remind him about that and take an interest in his daily trainings and what he has improved on so far. And I tell him, if you have prepared properly, then all that you strive for will be yours. The most important thing is that you must always believe in your abilities. Icho is living proof how hard work can reap the desired results. I told him my secret. I said, look at me. I have nothing but I have heart and I have determination. And most of all, I believe in myself. I believe in myself. We shall wait and see whether or not Tommy can emulate his father by conquering the world. That's all the time we have for you this month, with the exception of this month's selected Super Series moment. Don't forget, if you have a favourite Super Series moment of your own, send it over to badmintonworld at totalsportsasia.com. And as we say goodbye, don't forget, we will be back with more news, profiles and interviews. Don't forget to keep on tuning into Badminton World, your window to the game. In the meantime, it's farewell for now from Badminton World. It's the world we know.